Alright, hello everybody out there. I hope you are doing well. It is time for another edition of In Between Days where we chat chowder about everything that goes on in Salem on everyone's favorite soap, Days of Our Lives. And now also, we also chat the spin-off Beyond Salem that's going to be starting next week for five episodes on the NBC Peacock app. And the global app in Canada. Now, if you haven't checked out my video previewing Beyond Salem, go check that out right now and then come on back here or check it out after listening to this. The choice is yours, but I have released a preview video where we talk about every thing that we know so far about Beyond Salem, including who is going to be on the show, so check that out. We also have the matter of the petition going on to bring Isabel Durant, who of course plays Claire Brady back on Today's of Our Lives. We want to bring her back, so there is a petition link on, I think I posted that two videos ago when we were talking about last week's Days of Our Lives. I will post that petition link again. I believe I heard a rumor there are already 500 plus signatures on that so let's see if we can keep that going and bring Isabel Durant back on to Days of Our Lives and now without further ado we are going to jump into the week that was in Salem on Monday we start off with EJ freeing Xander for one million dollars the same one million dollars that Sammy paid to Xander to expose the affair that Nicole had with Xander. So that's what's uh, happening in the beginning of uh, the show on Monday. And also Xander negotiates getting his job back at Basic Black. So we will have to wait and see how everybody reacts to that, including Brady and Nicole. I'm not sure else it's a good thing he did negotiate his job back because I don't know how else he would have afforded a place since he's obviously kicked out of the Horton house and we're gonna get to that next because Julie is at Horton house with Gwen and Jack and she does not buy Gwen's story about what she's trying to say about how she was uh, basically an innocent party in all of the drug smuggling shenanigans going on and what the very reason Xander got arrested of course was for all of that as we covered in previous weeks and essentially Julie is not buying it and of course she is on to Gwen she's on the right track that Gwen was more involved and does have some secrets that she's still carrying and it is Xander in fact that is covering for her We also get Chanel and Johnny having drinks together, and Paulina crashes their little date. Paulina sees Allie and Trip on the way out, and Allie finds out about Chanel's date that she's on, so Trip and Allie leave instead of uh, interfering and coming into the place and bothering Chanel and Johnny they decide to move on elsewhere and uh, they don't at that point meet who this new mystery interest is of Chanel's but we get to that later in the week and also on Monday Ben and Sierra continue their celebrations not too much development there just finally being back together and uh, enjoying it Tuesday Trip tells Allie that he loves her and Allie doesn't say it back because she's not quite sure yet and so there's a whole aftermath of that. Abe is trying to decide with himself if he can forgive Paulina or not. We get more between Chanel and Johnny as well as Gwen and Xander taking things to the next level. On Tuesday we have Rafe, Ava and Nicole and also Gabby so all that interaction there Gabby continues to try to manipulate the situation so that Ava ends up with or rather Nicole ends up with Rafe and Ava is kind of pushed out and of course I feel that this is kind of obvious but a lot of people do not see what I see but I believe wholeheartedly that this domesticated Ava 
that is increasingly getting jealous about the situation between Rafe and Nicole is going to snap and we are going to get the old uh, Ava back. The one that gets a little bit jealous and a little bit psychotic as she did with uh, this whole Steve and Kayla drama back in the day. So I believe we're going to get that sinister Ava back. Uh, sooner than later. Also on Wednesday, Kate tells Philip not to hire Jake, but eventually Philip is persuaded by Jake to hire him after all, and that's probably going to be quite the disaster. Brady also wants Chloe to come with him on a trip, a business trip, or at least he presents it as a business trip, but even Chloe wonders what the deal is with that, and Philip definitely does not like it. On Thursday, we see more of that. Philip not being okay with Chloe going out with Brady. Nicole does not want to come between Rafe and Ava, so she kind of has a chat with Rafe about that. And, of course, on either... Th I'm not sure if it was Thursday or Friday, but Ava uh, is a comes home and sees... Nicole back at the house which was all orchestrated by Gabby but in reality Nicole is suggesting that they don't see each other anymore because she doesn't want to come between Rafe and Ava but it might be a little bit too little too late when it comes to all of that Jake and Gabby are also continuing to plot against Philip and try to take over Titan but uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm not sure where that storyline is going and what the motivations are there, but we'll have to wait and see. Justin and Bonnie also continue to make wedding plans, but that brings us into Friday, and there's a lot of silly stuff going on with Justin and Bonnie, but we will get to that in just a second. So on Friday, we see that Ali and Trip are finally going to meet Chanel's love interest, who of course we know is Johnny, but... When Johnny does enter the room and Allie and Trip see who it is, there are some uh, strange reactions, but we're not really going to get to see any of that until at least Monday as they leave it as a cliff cliffhanger. Justin also on Friday asks Steve to be his best man, which is totally awkward, uh, considering that when everybody thought that Steve had turned into Stefano and all of that, uh, Kayla and Justin were briefly together, and not only that, but Steve's sister, we all know, is, or was, Adrian, and now he's asking Steve, who already doesn't like Bonnie, to be his best man at his wedding to a woman who looks exactly like his ex-wife. That's not awkward, no, not at all. Speaking of awkward, we get the debut of Callista Lockhart. Callista Lockhart is in Salem. Who is Callista Lockhart? Apparently some long-lost sister of Bonnie's who knows a secret. Apparently, Bonnie murdered her husband or something, and there's some money involved, so we're going to have to see how that all pans out. But of course, I believe it's going to throw a nice dramatic monkey wrench into Bonnie and Justin's wedding plans. Something really silly about Friday was they didn't show Victor, but it was implied that he was off-screen and got into a food fight with... Uh, Justin and Bonnie when he found out they were getting married and that's that's just absolutely ridiculous and too campy so I don't know why they had to do do that I could see maybe throwing one thing and so maybe maybe Adrian could have had some pie on her face but to imply or show that he had wrecked his whole living room and tossed the lamp over and thrown all this food around is beyond ridiculous really <laughs> And, of course, by Thursday, September 2nd, I also think that some people in Salem will be leaving temporarily. Um, I, I speculate that at least um, Ben and Sierra must go on their honeymoon because they're going to be off in a spin-off land on Beyond Salem. So we know that there's some characters on Beyond Salem that are not currently on the show that will be featured on Beyond Salem, but there's also some characters that are currently on the show that will be 
going on a little bit of a trip and they're going to pop up on Beyond Salem next week. We covered Beyond Salem as I mentioned in a separate video so the preview is before this. Um, if I can figure out all the technical pyro and ballyhoo I'm gonna set it up so that you can just click back onto that Beyond Salem preview video when I mention it but if not it's uh, gonna be in the archives right before this video that you're listening to now so that will have your full coverage of the preview we're basically reviewing the preview video that has been released in regards to Beyond Salem and we also had a little bit of fun talking about previous specials that Days of Our Lives has put on including One Stormy Night and Night Sins those were primetime specials so a little bit different but we had we had some fun looking back at that briefly at the end of our last special edition and uh, that's about all that I'm going to cover for this episode uh, not liking Callista Lockhart uh, she's definitely no Calliope Jones I'll say that if any of you remember Calliope Jones uh, out there um, I did get a little bit of Calliope Jones vibes for some reason off of Callista Lockhart but she's definitely no Calliope Jones there's absolutely no comparison beyond a little bit of quirkiness uh, she's not even uh, Susan Banks but definitely this odd character that they're bringing in and I uh, so far, I'll just uh, mention that I'm liking the new Johnny Demira, who of course seems to want to get into producing films, and Tony and Anna wanted to support that, but EJ is very against it and does not want him doing that. EJ wants him to join the Demira family, and Tony had an interesting point. I don't know if it was this week or last week. I do believe it was this week where Tony said or mentioned that EJ originally did not want to be part of the Demira family business. In fact, he was a race car driver, but EJ is very dead set on bringing Johnny into the family business, and that's the way he wants it. Um, this car this uh, Carson Boatman that's playing the uh, Sorapsed Johnny, the all-grown-up Johnny. He's doing a pretty good job so far. Of course, they don't talk about his missing eye, and they probably never will. They don't talk about Philip's missing leg either. So perhaps um, through the magic of stem cells or Dr. Ralph or something in between, we're just not going to ever mention those things again. Uh... And I think that's about it for this week. There was no mention of Sammy and her kidnapping, so the mystery of who will start to get worried about Sammy and where, in fact, is she continues, but it's really not touched upon this week. And with everybody, or not everybody, but with John and Marlena and a few others leaving town to be featured on Beyond Salem, it may take a little while before we find out where Sammy is and another interesting thing no Lucas this week no Lucas this week at all so could he have something to do with the kidnapping I don't personally think so I mentioned a few videos back that I believe that EJ and Kristen are in cahoots and probably have Sammy and Sarah on the same island try saying that three times fast Sammy and Sarah may be on the same island and I guess we'll find that out in the future and that's all we're gonna really wrap it up for this episode and we have a whole week's worth of days coming up this week and don't forget that beyond salem starts quite soon as well so pretty soon we're gonna be have a double whammy on i'm not sure how we're gonna cover that we're probably gonna do it uh in either one big batch or a two-part episode or something like that but i will cover what's going on in beyond salem as well as what's going on on the main show i just have to get into a special groove and figure out how it's all gonna work because i suppose say on a monday we're gonna have the main show and then the beyond salem so i don't want to chop it up too much i'll probably do it in a, in a nice streamlined experience for you all like i try to do uh, sometimes for the main show I talk about it day by day and the odd time I just kind of go storyline by storyline so I can't say that we're super streamlined but it looks like it's going to be a bit of a short one which is nothing wrong with that for this week that's basically what went on it's kind of seems to be a week where they're more setting things up that are going to be happening than they actually uh, put any 
tie any ribbons or put any bows on anything is what I was really getting to. So we're just gonna all have to wait and see what happens next, but obviously there's lots coming up with uh, Johnny and Allie and Trip and Chanel. Lots coming up with uh, Beyond Salem and the uh, missing Alemanian peacock. Once again, if you wanna hear more about that, check out my last video. And I'm gonna ask the same question as I asked a few, or once before, and I got a few interesting answers. I would still like to know some more about who you would like to see come back to Salem. You can pick anything from Brand anybody from Brandon Walker to uh, somebody we may not have seen on canvas before, like a, uh, not a, I was going to say Shane Donovan, but I meant Andrew Donovan, or Shane Donovan, who is on Beyond Salem. Uh, we could be, it would be nice maybe to see him coming back to the main show. And once again, remember, there is a petition going around to bring Isabel Durant back to Days. I thought she did a great job on Days, and uh, there's some people out there trying to I think I used her by the name of Patrick TV, if I'm recalling correctly, but as promised, I will post that link again. Bring Isabella Durant, Isabel Durant, back to days of our lives, and I will see you all next time before I just get a little bit too long-winded at the end here, or keep remembering extra things, but we got some fun and surprises coming up, so stick around. Um, like, share, subscribe, so you know when the next video is going to come out. I will see you in less than a week for another edition of In Between Days. Thanks a lot, everyone.